He boarded the steamer at Calcutta, where, where he was set upon by bandits and murdered. Tragic. Really tragic. Yeah, I quite agree. And yet, I mean, to be perfectly fair, I don't think we should cash the check he wagered until the 80th day arrives. Yeah, yeah. Only sporting. Well, to tell you the truth, I never really liked the man. So distant. Too private. Mm, it's certainly a brave Englishman, nevertheless. Pity. Pity. Mm. require a suite of adjoining rooms, if you please. For the day, we leave on the Carnatic this evening. We have been advised the Carnatic is having boiler problems and will not leave until high tide tomorrow. Well, then we will require the rooms for the evening. <clears throat> I want you to go straight to the dock and book our state rooms on the Carnatic and buy yourself some proper clothing. Give me the bag. And I shall set out in search of your uncle, Mr. Sinjay. You, my dear, must have a nice long nap while we attend to these errands. Would you care to register, sir? We have the Lord Nelson's suite at your disposal. Our very best. Lord Nelson. Oh, I see. Well, I suppose it will do. What is all this in? Sleep on duty? I look for far. I look good. No see. Hey, you give me money now. If you were paid to sleep, you'd be a multi-millionaire by now, wouldn't you? No! You give me money. Ah. I look for far better. No see. No, not one cent. Hey, you sick? Shut up. Go to sleep. At last. I would like two baths, please. Two first-class staterooms on the Carnatic for Mr. Phileas Fugg. Sir, it's been delayed. I know that. May I know where you're staying in Hong Kong, sir? Why? In case there is another change on the schedule. Oh, uh, the Bay Front Hotel. Thank you. See? Hello, Jackie. You? Oh, it's a small world, isn't it? Oh, where, where are you? What are you doing here? Me? You? Oh, uh, Hong Kong, you know. It's always been like a magnet to me, Hong Kong. The Orient. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where is uh, Mr. Fogg? Uh, well, we have just arrived. Oh, have you? Well, perhaps you could have a drink later on. Uh, perhaps. Uh, if you'll excuse me. The Bayfront Hotel. I have it. I have found Mr. Sinjay's home address. We can be on our way. Did you book our passage? Oh, oui, monsieur. Good. I hope you don't mind if we stop off at the tailors on the way. I've ordered some new clothing for us, which should be ready within an hour. You have been so very kind to me.
I will think of you often. Mademoiselle, I, I take leave of you with a pain in my heart. Farewell. Farewell. Odd. What do you suppose going to her? Hmm. Well, I should be back, um, I would think, uh, within an hour or two. Yes, monsieur. Thank you. Yes. Well, should we take one of those? There we go. Same thing. Hello. Interesting. I'll have to pay you later, I'm afraid. All right, then put it down. Chop, chop. That's better. Come on, you two! Get out a bit I'm looking for a Mr. Fogg, uh, Detective Fix. You just missed him, sir. Hi. I saw him leave just now. Do you know where he went? No, sir. Do you know when he'll be back? I don't know, sir. Oh, you don't know much, do you? I don't know. But... <laughs> sir, I have a message for you from the steamship company. The Canadian will be sailing this evening, after all, precisely at 10 p.m. Ah, oh, monsieur, merci. That was wonderful news. Would you inform Mr. Fogg of the new schedule? I will be happy to. <laughs> Don't fear the two of you. Stay on guard. As soon as he comes back with the girl, arrest him. You can give a description? Well, he's a tall English gent. Uh, I tell you what. The Indian girl is ravishingly beautiful, got it? Oh, forgive me, sir, but where would you be? I'll be keeping the Frenchman away from Fogg. If he finds out there's been a change in schedule, he could slip through our fingers again. <laughs> oh, you! What an unexpected pleasure. Again? Yes. I just happened to drop in to talk to an old friend of mine. <laughs> How about that drink now? Monsieur, may I ask you, are you possibly taking the ship Carnatic to Yokohama? Carnatic? Oui. Me? You. It is possible. The reason I ask is because, well, you see, the voyage has been delayed. Delayed? Until tomorrow. Yes, I knew that. You have heard of no further change. Why, is there one? Oh, no, monsieur. <laughs> well, uh, since we have so much time, um, I would be happy to have that drink with you. Oh. Uh, but, but not here, monsieur. No, uh, the water, the drinks. Oh, ooh. Let us uh, have a brandy or two in the nearby bistro. Bistro? <laughs> Uh, one moment, please. Yeah? I would like to leave a message for Mr. Thug. Yes. Yes, well, you find it quite satisfactory. We could use you on Savile Row. You take me there? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, my. Cheers. 
Excuse me, we're looking for Mr. Sinjay. He's gone, sir. Where? Holland. Holland? Are you sure? Two months ago, he met a Dutch woman. He likes very much. Oh, dear. Dear, dear, dear. We're here now, not to worry. Uh, we'll think of something. No hasty decisions. Yes? Yes. Before? Never. I have heard the palate of the English is not very adventurous, unlike their foreign policy. I beg your pardon? Oh, I mean no personal offense, Mr. Fogg. I was referring to the English practice of invading and occupying countries other than their own. Oh. Oh, I greatly admire your Queen Victoria for her devotion to her subjects, but I fear she wants more subjects than any country deserves. Don't you agree? I've never given politics much thought. May I ask you a question of character, Mr. Fogg? Character? Oh, you need not answer. But I have thought of this many times since we met. Tell me why, Mr. Fogg. Why did you rise up from the jungle to save my life when it could have meant losing yours? Well, it seemed a thing to do. I think... Yes? You are a most unusual man, Mr. Fogg. Oh, oh no, not at all. You are the bravest man I've ever known. No, no, come now, her. Uh... Uh, I see no other possible course. We shall simply carry on as we have been, and when we reach England, we shall take the channel boat to Holland. You have done so much for me already. Oh, believe me, I expect nothing. And I wish nothing in return at all. Indeed, I... 
I hope you don't think I harbor any ulterior motives. Uh, motives of a personal nature, shall we say. I wouldn't want you to think that of I... Of course not. I understand. Our relationship will, will remain as it has. Of course. And Mr. Fogg. Phyllis. I, too, would not wish you to ever think that. My only hope at this moment, my fervent prayer, is that you arrive in London within the 80 days. How very sweet of you, my dear. And I most certainly shall. Sir, you will come with us. You talking to me? You're under arrest. They must have found out I'm not your wife. Pass for two. Pass for two. Hmm. That's all. Where could he be? I have no idea. Well, he certainly knows the boat leaves at high tide in the morning. Hmm. He'll be back. I will bid you good night, then. Uh, good night, my dear. Auda? Yes. Auda, my dear. Sir, we don't want to have news of this get back home. My mother is not as strong as she was. Well, she sure scares me. This is not fog. What did you say? Not fog. This is certainly no princess. She is in my eyes, sir. Oh, you are wonderful. Get him out of here. Mistaken identities are. I can't believe it. Believe what? You slipped through our fingers again. And where were you? You didn't have the right papers. Not even a warrant. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to chase that man to the ends of the earth. And if he's not there when I get there, I'm going to chase him into the net. Would you two mind explaining to me and my bride-to-be just exactly what's going on here? 
bride to be. We have passage on the Canatic. The Canatic sailed last night. A change of schedule. We notified the passengers. No one told me. I can assure you that all peasants. When is the next passage? A week from tomorrow. A week. Do you suppose Monsieur Bosfatou sailed last night? He would have told us. Well, we shall simply book passage elsewhere. <laughs> No, no, sorry, sport. Come on, Chan. I could make it worth your while. At the Yokohama, you can't. I got my commitment. This cargo goes to Shanghai. I ain't about to change my course. Perhaps I could buy your boat. <laughs> I am serious, sir. And I am contracted to go to Shanghai, and so I shall. I must reach Yokohama by the 1st of September. Lunacy. I have a wager. I am going around the world in 80 days. It is 1,600 miles to Yokohama. 1,642. From there, we take a steamship to San Francisco. What steamship? I, uh, uh, hold on, let me see. I have it right. I can't find them. Yes, wait here. Ah, yes, here we are. The Ulysses Grant. Grant? Yes, the Ulysses Grant. You're in luck, sport. She's out of Shanghai. These are the 30th of every month. And just a four days to make it. And if your luck holds out, a good one will get us there with time to spare. Captain. I am prepared to pay you 300 pounds for the passage of myself and two of my colleagues. Ah, I can believe immediately. Not on your life, not till I get this trouble loaded. How long will that take? Now, an hour and a half. I think I can use the time to good advantage. Thank you. If you're late, we'll sail without you. Yes, indeed, indeed. the intrusion, I couldn't help noticing you're preparing to sail. Might one know the uh, destination? Shanghai. Couldn't make that Yokohama, could you? No, but I can take it to a ship in Shanghai that'll take you to Yokohama. Right, you're on. But it'll cost you about six, uh, 700 pounds. Hey. Oh. Well, i tell you what, I'll give you a... Uh, Draft on the Bank of England, negotiable anywhere. But I'll need a receipt against the eventual reimbursement. Oh, yes. Oh, that's lovely. Now, uh, I'm in desperate need of sleep. I've had a rather uh, difficult night. Go below, take a little monkey farm. Yeah, lovely. Uh, when are we sailing? Oh, now, an hour and a half. Oh, couldn't sail just a little earlier. Than... I... No, I never said nothing. Uh, anybody, yes. Yeah. He's about, um... Six feet tall, he speaks English and French, and I fear he's come upon foul play. Please, make a thorough search. Certainly, sir. Thank you. Good day, sir. Sir, that couple that just left, they asked the description of the two we're looking for. Impossible. But... They left for Yokohama last night. Oh. Show me the line! Prepare to hoist the mainsail!
refuse to think otherwise. However, yes. one must always look to the future. The future? Yes. Good morning, sir. You must be our other passenger. Pleasure to meet you, sir. My name is Fong, and uh, this is Princess Aouda. Glad to meet you, I'm sure. And you, sir, you're... Yes. Oh, uh, Fix. Wilbur Fix. Well, sir, I'm certain we shall have a most enjoyable journey together. Uh, if the weather holds us... Yes, yes. Say, haven't I seen you somewhere before? I don't think so, sir. Your face seems somewhat familiar to me. Uh, tell me, uh, do you, by any chance, play whist? No. Yes. Oh. No matter. I shall be happy to teach you. <laughs>
Bros. Unpleasant news. You see, uh, Captain Bunsby and his crew. Huh? Well, it appears they've been washed overboard, lost at sea. Phileas! Who's steering the ship then? <clears throat> at the moment, no one. We're floundering. Phileas! Yes, what is it, my dear? We're sinking. I beg your pardon? There's water everywhere. The ship is sinking. Oh, well. Obviously, we can't stay here. Come along, my dear. Quickly. Uh, aye. Oh, 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 has even saved the life of a Burmese prince. Amazing act of bravery. Where is he now? Hong Kong. Gentlemen, for the very first time, I believe our wager could be in serious jeopardy. There are still 42 days to go. I had this vision of him seated at this very moment in the saloon of a steamship out of Hong Kong, dining on white fish with redding sauce, with rhubarb and gooseberry tart for dessert. Not a bloody care in the world. I don't think I can walk. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Fish. No. We're not going to leave you here. No, no, no. Not going to leave you. Yeah. 
journey uh, is there a quick away you are pressed for time well i should like to catch a steamship the ulysses grant leaving shanghai on saturday at noon well transport can be arranged we simply must be on that ship oh there is a problem you might find certain roads are closed at this time closed yes the empress of china is en route to shanghai at this moment and therefore no one is allowed to travel in your case, Mr. Fogg, the Dowager Empress has a marked dislike of the British. Nevertheless, we shall press on. And you, sir, you will stay until your ankle is better. No, no, thank you all the same, Reverend. Uh, I've got to stay with them. Here, chap, sir. On your feet, please. <laughs> Obeyed our customs. Yes, mother. Bring them in. Are you of the same blood that she came? Yes. How so? The aunt of my father's father has such blood.
It is the wish of my mother, Empress of all China, that you be set free. I worship your generosity, Majesty, as do my companions. No, they are not of your blood. Your Majesty... I regret to say, they must lose their heads. Then I too must die. Uh, wait a moment. Um, if you please. Uh, I am responsible. If anyone is going to die, let it be me. This gentleman is my guardian. I would not wish to live without him. Your guardian will be set free. He must die. I? Die? No, it was my fault. I am the one responsible for putting us here. If someone is going to die, then it must be me. But he's your guardian. Yes. It's a great puzzle. You may live. Rise. Thank you, Your Highness. Mr. Phileas Fogg, accompanied by a young Indian woman, left the city of Hong Kong on approximately the 24th of this month. Now, we have that confirmed, sir. The man's alive. We have here a man of such infinite cunning. He will surely become a case history in the annals of crime. Without question, sir. Fortunately, we still have one good prospect. Yes, sir. That remarkable Detective Hicks. Oh, oh Hicks, sir. Oh, he's staying very close to Fogg, sir, waiting for exactly the right moment to arrest him. Quite so. This point of time, every hope, every expectation we have left lies in this one man, Detective... Oh. Hicks, sir. Fix. Damn fine fellow, Fix. Oh! <laughs> very embarrassed. Embarrassed? For the lie I told His Majesty. I wasn't aware that... I mean in saying that you were my... my guardian. Under the conditions, it was quite understandable. Indeed, you saved our lives. If I may say so, you were quite remarkable. Oh, but I do not want you to feel that you must be responsible for me. We are simply two people who have met under extenuating circumstances and will, of course, eventually go our separate ways. Yes. What was that? If you will excuse me. There you are. May I? You find me somewhat embarrassed, Mr. Fogg. Hmm? Oh, you too. I feel impelled to make a statement. Well, I don't think you're going to quarrel with anything I'm going to say. I mean, a man, a, any man, you know, who who claims to be a man. But he's got to do his duty, hasn't he, sir? I'm sorry, I don't quite follow. Don't follow? No, it's just the other way around, isn't it, sir? 
I mean, that is the point. Follow. Mr. Fix, have you been drinking? No. Oh, no. Wouldn't touch the stuff. Not unless it was in the line of duty. Duty. That is what we're talking about, isn't it? Is it? Anything that happens, I don't want you to take it personally, sir. I, I want you to bear that in the forefront of your mind. I mean, don't take it personally. Well, at least I've got that off my chest. Good night. Oh, man. Jean, we were told that he arrived in Yokohama on the canal. What can I say, monsieur? The French consulate don't keep record of every Frenchman who comes to Yokohama. But he just arrived yesterday and we... Nevertheless, we're going to try to investigate. But before, I would like you to fill those forms, please. Forms? Yes. In triplicate. Sign each one of them. Three copies. Is that what I say? Why? You wish to discuss our policy, or do you wish to find your friend? I assume that both would be asking too much. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. I am Jean Passepartout, once renowned of the famous Cirque de Paris. I am busy. What, uh, what do you want? Uh, to work, monsieur. You are looking at a true professional. Are you strong? Look at this. I once did a triple somersault on the high wire. Can you sing? Like a bird. Can you sing standing on your head? Many times. I uh, do it for enjoyment. Can you sing on your head with the top spinning on your left foot? I like it best that way. And with a saber balanced on your right. A saber? A saber. You mean a sharp saber? Both sides sharp. Well, why not? <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Scooby-Doo! Thank you, ma'am. Say what you will about Fogg. His rescue of their prince has miraculously healed our relations with the Burmese government, just when those relations were coming apart. A remarkable display of true English character, ma'am. Tell me, sir, would you make a hero out of a bank thief? Certainly not. Gentlemen, Mr. Fogg cannot escape British justice. No, that would be wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But under these... Uh, trying circumstances. Can't there be some graceful way out of this? For the sake of our Burmese relations and for avoiding the dreadful disappointment it would bring to our British subjects. Your Majesty, I think we have a solution to our problem. We've just had word of Mr. Fogg. Yes? Lost at sea, Your Majesty. The China Sea. All hands were lost. There are no survivors, ma'am. Indeed. Lost. What a very great pity. Lost. Frightful. <laughs> well, here you are, sir. A warrant for the arrest of one Phileas Fogg. At last. It was sent here on the mere chance this fellow might reach Yokohama. Yes. If only the authorities had shown the same zeal earlier on. Ooh. What a damn shame you can't arrest him right here. The papers of extradition from the Japanese would take months, of course. Do you know where he is? Now, I know where he will be. On his way to San Francisco. Calculations are correct, Perspitude. No, thank you. At 12 knots, we shall cross the Pacific in 21 days, in time to catch the Central Pacific from San Francisco. Oh, right on schedule. From San Francisco to New York on the 26th of September, New York to London by the 5th of October. London? And I never thought I would see it again. I should arrive at the club several hours before I'm due there. Hmm. Then, of course... There is the matter of the princess. Yes, uh, she has been acting most peculiarly lately. She isn't coming to dinner? No, not hungry. I have noticed too, monsieur, uh, a strange melancholy. You have seen the way she looks at you. It looks at me? Oh, yes. I wasn't aware of any... Monsieur, I am of the opinion that she... I believe that she harbors emotions for you other than gratitude. What are you talking about? Well, we French would call it uh, une affaire de cœur. An affair of the heart. You mean to say... Oui, monsieur. Utter nonsense. Is it? Well, of 
course, I admit I do have a deep abiding affection for the princess, but I don't think I've ever given her any reason to believe that... Well, that... Well, on the contrary, I, I think I've made it quite clear that... No, no, you must be mistaken. Perhaps. I think I know what it is. She's homesick. Homesick? Yes. Yes. Oh, that would explain the whole thing, wouldn't it? Oui, monsieur. Her teeth glitter between her lips like dewdrops in a passion flower's half enveloped breast. Beneath the silken folds of her tunic, Here you are. I, uh, I couldn't find you anywhere. These, um, these past few weeks have been... I believe they've aroused a most peculiar feeling within me. Oh? Yes, you see. You've preoccupied my thoughts in many ways. Well, that is to say, um... Your resourcefulness, your uh, your knowledge of the world at large, your, your your courage. Do you think a young woman with a bit of knowledge and courage to be remarkable? What, what I mean to say is, um, well, that is, I I don't mean. Um, what do you mean, Phileas? <laughs> what I have to say is far more difficult for me than I ever thought possible. Indeed. Perhaps more so than going around the world. I... Oh, dear. How can I ever put this? Try, Phileas. The point is, I... I'm a very private sort of man, you see. I've never felt it necessary to... to reveal myself to anyone. In point of fact... I've always felt incapable of expressing my true feelings to others. You are not alone. Many others have that problem. They do? Yes, of course. Still, a very private man. A man completely set in his ways. A man who has lived alone for most of his life and finds that arrangement Quite satisfactory. I see. I would never presume to speculate what your feelings are towards me, but as for myself, I I could never contemplate a liaison with anyone. <clears throat> it was Shakespeare who said, I believe. Love. There's nothing else but an insatiate thirst of enjoying a greedily desired object. Do you feel any less private now? 
are you afraid of, Phyllis? Nothing. Nothing at all. That is... We shall be parting when we get to England and... We will still remain good friends, I trust. Friends? Yes. Forgive me, I... Oh, I, uh... I don't know what came over me, I... You don't? Oh, I'm profoundly ashamed of myself to have uh, taken advantage of a, a, a simple, affectionate moment like this. I do apologize. And now that we understand each other, I'm... I'm very grateful that we had this little chat. Chat? Yes, quite. You have your emotions under control now. Yeah, I do now, thank heavens. What a pity. I beg your pardon? God help Phileas Fogg should he ever be carried away. How awful that would be. To allow something so uncontrollable to enter your punctual head. Good night, Phileas. I must hurry off to bed, or I might be late for breakfast. I may even forego it altogether. the information, monsieur, that the train leaves tomorrow morning at 7. Secure the tickets? Oui, monsieur. But uh, we cannot have a compartment until we reach a place called Omaha. There uh, we will try... Ch ch if you would excuse me a moment, monsieur. Care to dance? You? You dance? I have a certificate in ballroom proficiency at the Gardener's Folk School of the Arts in Bletchley on Stoke. Of course, I was only 12 at the time, but uh, I don't believe one forgets these things. Shall we have a go?
out looking for trouble. Got to. You. I'm cutting in. I beg your pardon. I'm taking over. Move. Look here. A stranger to your country and not familiar with your customs. If the young lady does not wish to dance with you, I must ask you to leave us alone. You want trouble? I never seek it out, sir. I never shrink from it either. Move. Sir, I resent your tone of voice. You're going to be a corpse if you don't get out of the way. I equally resent your choice of words. Now, excuse us, please. Unhand me, sir. Should you wish to continue this, I suggest that we go outside. And I trust Queensbury rules will be observed. Someday, you and me are going to meet up again. I shall welcome the opportunity to thrash you once more. To that end, sir, may I ask your name? James. James? Jesse. Hello, oh. oh, Mr. James Jesse. I can only hope that you're not representative of the American character. Good evening, Mr. Jesse. We'll see you again! Thank you for your support, Gus, but it wasn't necessary. I also attended the Hapswell Brixton Academy of Pugilism. Shall we? No. Why not? No, I've never felt better in my entire life. that it was something we would need for the trip. What? All aboard! Oh, I say. What's the matter? Oh, look, it's Mr. Fix. Oh, oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And a lovely morning it is, is it not? Yes, indeed. Uh, you're going east? Uh, east, west, I just love travel, that's all. Unless it's by rickshaw or rowboat. I draw the line there. <laughs> yes. What? Oh, Are you waiting for someone? Oh, yes, pass the two. Oh. oh. Three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you are the paper, monsieur. You are a hero. I beg your pardon? Jesse, monsieur. The notorious gunman. Oh, James, Jesse, that scoundrel. <laughs> what? Never mind that, Passepartout. I must tell you that, quite frankly, your lack of punctuality is getting out of hand. Where the devil have you been? I will show you. Look. Voila. I buy them at bargain prices, monsieur. Now we are prepared. Now they will never dare to attack us. Who? Indians. We are entering the untamed west. Indians. Well, come on, out with it, man, out with it. Phileas Fogg is still alive, sir. How can you be certain? The British consul in Yokohama sent word out days ago. But the telegraphic service there, sir, has been interrupted by a power failure in Japan, and so we just found out yesterday. Found out what? Phileas Fogg arrived in Yokohama with an Indian princess and Detective Fix. Fix? Fix? Uh, yes, sir. And all three of them got on board a steamship bound for San Francisco. I tell you, McBain, it gives one heart. <laughs> Sir, fix steadfast to the last. If ever a servant of the government should be knighted for his services. He's a private detective, sir. Quite so. Makes me proud to be an Englishman. 
Yes, sir. Fix. Detective Fix. <laughs> God bless you. Central Pacific to Ogden, Union Pacific to Omaha. Coast to coast, 3,786 miles. Estimated time schedule, seven days, five hours and 32 minutes. Any questions? How many days do we have left? 18. Good. Now then, let us begin, oh, no. shall we? Right. Hear me now, Jesse. You just keep low for a while. Let things cool off. Thank you, Frank. When you get to Omaha, give my love to Z. Yeah, we'll do. to use them if we are to shoot Indians. Why? Why, Leon? Why must you shoot Indians? Because, uh... Ah, oh, I see what you mean. Uh, you think I speak of India Indians, but no, 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 no. Not India Indians. It is American Indians. You want to kill them? Do you not think they have been killed enough already? Madame? Have they not been killed and starved and made miserable by the people who invaded their country? Just as my own countrymen were invaded by the British? No. I do not blame the Indian for defending his homeland. You will please put the gun away. Point well taken, Hasbro. I do hope, however, you intend no grave reflection upon the British. We do, after all, bespeak a civilized society throughout the world, whereas these Americans... If I show oh. again... Oh, no, If I attack again... No, no. If I... Excuse me, sir. I should like one of your local pheasants, uh, with a little touch of sage, perhaps. We can all share. Goodbye, Hardak, chicken! It is chicken, monsieur. And by the look of it, it must have had a long and difficult life. And quite an unpleasant death. We got here. Mister, I think you and me got something to settle up. You are? Of course not. Thank you, Pick. Do I assume here that you demand satisfaction over our encounter last evening? Of you. My servant has brought along several weapons. I'm certain one of them will do. We'll settle this at the next stop, then. Stop? I have no intention of stopping anywhere. 
If you wish to engage in a duel, sir, I see no reason why we can't settle the matter here and now, on the move, as it were. Monsieur, tell him it was a mistake. You must. Tell him. What's going on here? Keep out of this. You don't talk to me like that. <gasps> you. Not to worry, sir, it's all right. Although we intend to settle a certain matter here, we have no intention of delaying this train. As for two, my weapon, if you please. Mister, I don't know who you are, but anybody puts up a gun at Jesse James, he's a dead man. Oh? I take it, sir, you are proficient in small arms fire? He could take you blindfolded at 50 yards. Oh, Phileas. You talk too much. Now, let's get started. No. OK, everybody out. Now, how do you want to for you to leave? Now, get into the next car. Oh, not here. Gentlemen, if you will please to stand back to back in the middle of the car. Go to count to five. At the count of five, each man will start to the far end of the car where you're turning far. Understand? Yeah, let's get at it. If best man win, whichever body falls first, that body be removed from the body of the train. Ready, gentlemen? Ready. I'm ready. One. Two. Three. Four.
What the devil? Oh, listen! Don't you hear? A few minor bruises, Captain, nothing more. Thank God. <laughs> the engine. Where's the engine? Captain? The Indians appear to have stolen the locomotive. Indeed. Uh, this pass for two. Uh oh, look at that. Uh -huh. ah, pass for two. There you are. <laughs> Well done. Let me give you a hug. Well done. Oh, it's a crazy engine. It would not no, stop. Oh, never mind. Never mind. As you're not an engineer, we can hardly blame you for that. But what have I done to you? We are stranded here on the savage American prairie. No. We shall press on. How? There is no other transportation, monsieur. Well, who could have foreseen the Indian attack? I mean... Hmm. Mr. Fix, as far as I'm concerned, the unforeseen does not exist. Come along. Oh, wait for me. I wonder. had continued exactly according to schedule, we would have arrived in New York 12 hours before the departure of the boat to Liverpool. We are now exactly 20 hours behind, so 12 from 20 is 8. Eh? We have only 8 hours to regain as we sit here. Yes, but we're not sitting in a train, are we? Excuse me. Are you in need of transportation? Uh, yes, we are. Uh, for what purpose? In order to leave here. Oh! oh yeah. <laughs> yes, allow me, gentlemen, to introduce myself. Mudge is the name. Yes, yes. yes. Well, for those in urgent necessity of moving on, it's uh, catastrophic. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. You have something in mind, sir? Meat and cheese. Yes, cheese and meat. I haul it in monthly from Omaha. And I haven't paid those railroad thieves one thin dime. Do you know how much they charge for freight per pound? Haven't a clue. How many have you got? I beg your pardon? Well, how many in your party? Your party? Uh, um, uh, four. Four. Uh -huh. uh, three, three, four, two. What do you weigh, sir? That would be three hundred and sixty dollars and ninety. Six cents. You mean you have transportation? Yeah, to Omaha! Can we buy the tickets on board? Everybody does. How much are they, Conductor? Depends on where you're going. New York. Uh, what time do you have, Conductor? Precisely 12.30 p.m. Correct, sir. So we have a boat leaving New York Harbor tomorrow night at 8 p.m. All aboard! We should arrive at 6.30. Are we on schedule? For 20 years. 
I beg your pardon? For 20 years, haven't lost a second yet. You can absolutely depend on that. Have a wonderful trip. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Depends on where you've been. Unfortunately, Bradshaw's timetable of transatlantic steamers shows the next departure two days hence. Perhaps. Yes? We could find a cargo ship as we did in Hong Kong. My very thought. Going to Liverpool? Why not? Well, at one of the world's largest seaports? Ships from all over the world? Now then, I suggest that, um... Uh, you and Passepartout make your inquiries west of the Hudson, and the Princess and I will make our search on the eastern docks. You want us to split up? Now? We are pressed for time, sir. In 11 days, I have to be, must be, in London. We have no other course. We shall meet back here on this exact spot in two hours' time. Passepartout, thank you very much. Come I feel like following him. Why? I may never come back. Monsieur promised he would be here in two hours. And his word, like that of all English gentlemen, is as good as his band. Sir, is this ship about to leave? At the dawn. With the passengers in the evening dress? A bon voyage party. Mr. Vanderbilt always has a party before leaving for Europe. Europe? Liverpool. Uh, would that be uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt? Himself. Well, my dear, I think perhaps we've found it. Do you think Mr. Vanderbilt would accept any passengers? No. Then how can we... The situation demands that we stow away. Oh, Elias. I know. I don't like it either. I don't like it one bit. Smacks of dishonesty. But we simply have no other choice. What about Mr. Fix and Passepartout? Well, we'll owe them an apology and an explanation when next we meet. I'm certain they'll understand. Well, come along, my dear. Oh, good evening. Good evening, sir. I am Mr. Phileas Fogg, and this charming lady here is the Princess Aouda of Pillage, India. I don't believe I... Forgive me, sir. You're not on my list. How odd. Well, Cornelius insisted that I bring the princess with me, as he so wanted to meet her. Well, uh, please inform him that I did arrive, but obviously some clerk has made an unfortunate mistake. Under the circumstances, sir, I'm certain that Mr. Vanderbilt would wish you to come aboard. Thank you so much. Your hat, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, dear, sir. No, thank you. Are you having fun? Yes, of course. Yes. Hmm? Yes? Your chin is twitching. Really? I have never, ever in my whole life, willingly and deliberately lied before. I fear it's left me profoundly shaken. So nice to see you again, Cornelius. Oh well, <clears throat> shall we? Mr. Vanderbilt awaits. Mr. 
man. You're looking very fit, sir. I don't remember. Fog. Phileas Fogg? Oh, yes. And the Princess Aouda of Pillage, India? Enchanting. Captain Phillips. How do you do, sir? Well, I must say, Mr. Vanderbilt, uh, Princess and I certainly wish you a very happy voyage, sir. Right. Your chin is twitching again. Yes, I know. Thank you very much. What are we going to do when they've discovered that we've stayed on board? We shall simply tell them that, um, that, uh, we had one too many. We became intoxicated and... Cheers. I must say, Phileas, for someone who never lies, you are very clever at it. That's two hours and ten minutes. Where are they? So we'll be here. Oh, yeah. Uh, of course they will. Of course, he could have been lying to us, couldn't he? <laughs> so, monsieur, what are you saying? He has never once lied in his whole life. <laughs> well, what is it? That man uh, we spoke to, Paul. Oh, you don't remember his name? No. Several weeks ago, you made a wager in Bermuda, if you recall, that a Mr. Phileas Fogg would not make it around the world in 80 days. Fogg? That's the same man? Same. You made a wager of $5,000, sir, and here we are leaving for Liverpool. I believe they intend to stow away. Well, we can't let that happen, can we, Captain? With your permission, sir, I'll deal with the matter at once. Please. Uh, he's, he's quite scared, I must say. Um, excuse me, sir. Would you come with me, please? Excuse us. Hey, look here, what's the meaning of this? What are you doing? Unhand that woman! But you did say you could swim! Yes! What? You... What? Oh, nothing. Nothing. What do you say to that, eh? Something must have happened. Yes, it has, and I'll tell you what it is. Both of them on their way to Canada by now. I'll never forgive myself for having neglected my duty after having travelled over halfway round the world in order to... To what? Yes, indeed. Well, there's, a, there's a noise there. Is it? I knew it! I knew you would be back! But... But, uh, What's the matter? The boat! It is so small! Small? To cross the Atlantic! Good heavens! Cross the Atlantic in a rowing boat? Are you mad? Well, have you found a steamer, then? We did. Oh? Huh? Oh, that's wonderful! It wasn't. They threw us overboard. And you, Passepartout? I take it you had no luck? 
Nothing. Well, that's not quite right. Uh, they did tell us of a small cargo ship leaving for Bordeaux. Bordeaux? Is it leaving tonight? Yeah. No, no. It'll be early tomorrow morning. But it is no good. Bordeaux is on the wrong side of the English Channel. One step at a time, Passepartout. One step at a time. Come on. No, sir. Stand by to cast off. But, sir, it's important that we get to Liverpool. The answer is no, sir. We're bound for Bordeaux, and Bordeaux it'll be. But you have no cargo and... We're going in ballast, sir. And you have no passengers. I never have passengers. Captain, I will pay you to take us to Liverpool. Absolutely not. Who is the owner of this vessel? Perhaps he will listen to reason. Oh, well, now, sir, it just so happens you are speaking to the owner of this vessel, and I tell you, we are going to Bordeaux. Jenks, whenever you're ready, we'll get underway, sir. Aye, aye, Captain. Captain? Would you consider, then, sir, taking us to Bordeaux? I would not take you to Bordeaux, sir, if you were to pay me $2,000. I will pay you $2,000. Huh? Two thousand. As you wish. A piece. As you wish. <laughs> You're mad. No, Captain. We are simply anxious to leave. Bordeaux. But you people are going to have to go below. I want to keep this deck clear for the crew. More than happy to comply, sir. Well, this hand is finished. How soon, monsieur? A moment now. You're playing with fire, Bob. Just a fix. I have crossed Paris at war, the Swiss Alps, the jungles of India and Burma. I have rickshawed through China and, when reaching America, undertaken a duel with a Mr. James Jesse. You really think I intend to give up now? No. Trumps. What? What is this? What is this, sir? What? What? What's that going, me, sir? <laughs> Mr. Jakes! Oh, and your hide, sir! Aye, aye, sir. Shoot me! Let me out! Thank you. Thank you very much. This is mutiny, you know. Pure and simple. Mr. Fugg will take responsibility. You know what he's doing. Well done, Mr. Jenks. Well done, indeed. Gentlemen, we are now heading a course for Liverpool at full steam. By my calculations, we should make the crossing from this point in seven days. Keep up the good work. I must get to London in just over one week's time. Aye, aye, sir. All right, men, back to work. Come in. Oh, uh, 
Forgive me for intruding, but I, um... Well, that is, um... Are you all right? Yes. I didn't see you all afternoon on deck, and uh, it occurred to me that perhaps we ought to have another, um... Chat? Yes. The thought came to me this morning that uh, as we near my homeland, uh, you must be getting quite homesick for yours. No. No? No. Is that all you wish to say? I would, uh... You seem so very... Melancholy. Is there something wrong? Wrong? What could possibly be wrong? I mean, we shall both be reaching our destination shortly, and that will be the end of it. We shall say goodbye. I dare say you remember Sir Francis Cromarty. Yes. Before he left us, he, he gave me a slender volume of uh, Indian poetry. One of the passages has lodged itself in my memory, and I, uh, I... I hope you don't find this shocking. I'm listening. It goes... Beneath her long silken lashes, purest reflections of a celestial light swim in the black pupils of her great clear eyes as in the sacred lakes of the Himalayas. How very lovely. Why should I be shocked? Because whenever I think of this passage I think only of my dearest Amuda, I do know this, that I care for you more than any person I have ever known. But the very thought of... Yes? It's too late for me. It's too late for me to even attempt to impose my rigid way of life on someone other than a servant. No. Perhaps you could change, Phileas. There are those people who can change their lives. But I feel I am not among them. No. I am not the one for you, my dear Aouda. I would that I were. Someday, Phileas. Someday you are going to be even lonelier than you are now. Of course, Mr. Jones. You're going to have to make a decision very soon. Oh, what sort of decision? Since New York, we have been keeping up on full steam. Yes, I know. We could have gotten to Bordeaux on short steam, but not like this. Just exactly what are you trying to say, Mr. Jenks? Your coal, sir, is giving out soon. We'll have to go on very short steam now. It'll take a couple more days. That is the decision you present me with? Yes, sir. Mr. Jenks. Yes, sir. I want you to feed those boilers, 
and keep the coal burning at full steam until it's exhausted. Yes, sir. Bring the captain on deck. Now? Now. Captain. Traitor. Pirate. Pick a room. Good afternoon, Captain. I do want to apologize for any inconvenience. You will pay for this, sir. Precisely what I had in mind. I should like to purchase your ship. Never. By all the devils, you shall not, sir. Captain, I regret to say that purchased or not, I am obliged to burn her. What did you say? In the upper part of her, at least. You see, the coal has given up. Burn my ship! A ship worth twenty thousand dollars in pounds. That's um. I'll give you thirty. What did you say? I'll give you thirty. Sure. Quiet, Pastor. You will give me thirty thousand dollars. It's yours. <laughs> May I speak with you, sir? Private. This is not easy for me, sir. See, uh, I am an honest man, and I cannot deceive you. This ship is is more than twenty years old. I probably couldn't get more than fifteen. So, I uh, thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> you are now the new owner of the Henrietta. Thank you very much, sir. My first order will be a tear of the parts. Mr. Jenks, what? Yes, sir. I want you to chop up everything that's wood. Everything? Frames, bulkheads, bunks, seats, tables, everything. Holy moly. What's left now, sir, but the wheelhouse. Turn it down. And when it's gone? 47 miles left to Liverpool. That's all we need. Yes, sir. Anything, monsieur? Not yet. Everything is gone. There is nothing left to burn. What's that? Cool. Wait. Wait a moment. It's a Siegel, monsieur. No. No, by heaven, it is not. Land? England, my friends. England. <laughs> I have 12 hours in which to reach London. We can make it easily, monsieur. You have won. Oh. 
Uh, Mr. Park, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, but would you be so kind as to tell me what's to become of the uh, Henrietta? It's all yours, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. You're a true gentleman, sir. Mr. Fogg? Yes? That is Mr. Filiax Fogg. Yes, what is it, Mr. Fix? We are once again on British soil, sir. We are indeed, sir. I arrest you in the name of the law. I beg your pardon? No, it is incumbent on me to hand you this warrant. No. Robbery? Bank of England? I am a detective, sir. Good heavens. Always have been. Just a detective trying to do his duty. And now, sir, if you'll accompany me to the customs house, you'll be held there in custody until such a time as you are transferred to London. No, you cannot. Not now. He will lose the wager. Oh. No. Pass the two. Stop that. Stop that. Let him go. Do you hear me? Oh. Mr. Fix. Detective Fix, if you don't mind, sir. If you represent the law, then I have no other course than to come with you. Excuse me, sir. It's 10.30, McBain's. I'm having my tea. Yeah, but it is urgent, sir. Damn it, it's always urgent. Bring him in. Uh, I would like you to meet uh, Mr. Folkestone, sir. Please, call me Hal. Uh, he has a notion, well, he is under the impression, sir, that he is Henry IV. Hal! Uh, but his identification proves otherwise. Have you interrupted my tea in order to introduce me to a lunatic? Have a look at this, sir. Look inside. You'll find there are 55,000 pounds in banknotes. What? Oh, my God! Once more under the breach, dear friends, once more! Are these genuine? They're more than that, sir. More? I have identified these banknotes, sir, as the very same that were taken from this bank. Yeah, and if Mr. Folkestone does think that he is Henry IV, well, I can readily assure you, sir, he is our bank thief. Stop <laughs> him! It's over now, Princess. No question about it. There is no time. Somehow I... I feel that I have failed him. No. Blaming yourself won't help. I did not realize, until this moment, how much this meant to me. Please. Get a hold of yourself. There's been a 
mistake. It's really quite dreadful. But the bank robber has given himself up, positively identified, therefore, <laughs> you're free. <laughs> Mr. Fix, are you saying that now, after you've kept me here in this room for over four hours, I am free to leave? Yes, you're free. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, no. When is your next express train to London? You've just missed it, sir. The next one's at six. No. No, 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 that won't do at all. Uh, tell me, do you have any special trains that can be hired for a single occasion? We've got two locomotives, sir, the, the Shirley Rose and the Dewdrop, but <laughs> it costs you a fortune. I'll pay for it, whatever the price. You'll have to go to Stockport to get the locomotive, sir. Notify the engineer immediately. Tell him there's a generous reward if he can reach London within five hours. Yes. Yes, sir. You put your face in front of us. Sir, whatever you may be thinking, I am a man of honour and a true professional. If you want to know the whole truth, I've just lost £2,000. I beg your pardon? £2,000! That was the extent of the reward, wasn't it? Well, now, there won't be a reward, will there? I've gone all the way around the world for nothing! It serves you well. Serves me right, you mean? That is what I said. Furthermore, I was going to get married. <laughs> oh, oh uh, look at this. Yes, uh, is uh, Miss uh, Mildred Hapsworth, my Shropshire lass. We had a cottage all picked out, thatched and all. Now all my dreams have been shattered to smithereens. No, sir, you may very well have victory within your grasp, but it, there could be no victory for detective. Without train? You mean they haven't got one? Oh, aye. Well, you've sent for one. Should be here within an hour or two. No, we can't we get around this somehow? Oh, she's a beauty, that Shirley Rose, but <laughs> she ain't much good. We out tracked. <laughs> Onwards. Oh, wait for me. Stop. 
We are too late. My condolences. To come so very close. Indeed. Indeed. Drive on. the princess our guest room. But of course, monsieur. No breakfast, no lunch, no dinner. Not a word. Silence. We must do something. Yes. You're quite right. I will break down the door. Even if he takes the damage out of my salary, I must still take that risk. Oh, stay back. Monsieur, may I be of service? I should like to have a moment's conversation with the Princess Aouda. The door is unlocked. Oui, monsieur. Speak to him. Do something. Come in, my dear. Last few hours, I I've been going over in my mind the events of not only the last eighty days but my entire life. I've reached an inescapable conclusion. My life's been a total waste. Oh, Phileas! It's true. The ingrained habits of my existence have squandered my life, and I've gained nothing in exchange. I have no real friends, and but you do. Here. You see this clock on the mantel? There sits Phileas Fogg, a punctual machine. Indeed, a machine that has now failed the ultimate test of punctuality. And for that, I should feel desolate. But I don't. In point of fact, I feel... I feel that there has to be more to life than a membership in the Reform Club. There has to be more to living than the temperature of one's bath. These 80 days have not been in vain. They've allowed me to meet a person with whom I should very much like to share the remaining years of my life. If you could somehow find it in your heart to overlook my many faults, then I would be bold enough to ask you to be my wife. Oh, Phileas. Before you answer, I must tell you that I am penniless. 
I have only a few pounds left. Do you really think that matters to me? My prospects are questionable, to say the least. But I am still of sound mind and body. And I will do my very best to provide for you in any way that I can. Her eyes. Her lovely eyes. As in the sacred lakes of the Himalayas. Would you consider my proposal? Yes. Oh, yes. Pass Patou? Monsieur, here. I am here. Congratulations. Congratulations. I want you to go at once to the, the house of the Reverend Samuel Smythe and notify him that the princess and I wish to be married in the morning at his convenience. At once, monsieur. At once. Monsieur, uh, if you please, I am the servant of your good neighbor, Phileas Fogg, who has just returned from a trip around the world. Oh, really? Does he indeed? Oh, yes. And he would very much like you to perform a wedding ceremony in the morning, uh, at your convenience. Well, I dare say it won't be convenient at all. You see, I have Sunday services tomorrow. Uh, he will have to wait until Monday. Uh, but, but tomorrow is Monday. No, no, you're mixed up, I'm afraid. Today is Saturday, and therefore tomorrow is most definitely Sunday. Oh, no, 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 that cannot be. Today's paper. Saturday, not Sunday. You did it. Yes, but too, I'm afraid the strain has been too much for you. No, monsieur. I tell you, it is Saturday. The Reverend Samuel Smythe swears to it, and he is a man of God. Are you trying to say that I miscalculated by one full day? Here is today's paper. Look, it is truly Saturday. So you have it, monsieur. The evidence before your very eyes. Let me think. Let me think. God. Yes, 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 of course. The answer is so simple. It is? We did not take into account the sun. The sun? We traveled eastward continuously and always toward the sun. Yes, I know that. Ah, but the days therefore diminish as many times four minutes as we crossed degrees in that direction. They do? There are 360 degrees of circumference around the Earth. Four minutes times 360 gives one precisely 24 hours or one full day. Monsieur, I have no idea what you're saying, but I can tell you this. The clock. Look at the clock. We have only 15 minutes to reach the Reform Club. Oh, dear. My jacket. My jacket, please. Get the 
my farm club. Quick! Important news, Lord. You can win your bet after all. It's only Saturday. Not to worry, gentlemen. Phileas Fogg has lost already, as surely as we stand here. Gentlemen, it's precisely nine o'clock. Anyone for a game of whist? <laughs> 